Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today I want to show you how we can create the high poly and after that the low poly for this barrel that you see. We are going to bake all the maps inside 3ds Max and we are going to use the all new Bake to Texture inside 3ds Max 2021. This is something that if you want to try yourself, you need to get the latest update and then you are going to have Bake to Texture and as well the tiling map which you can see the video that I made a while ago down in the description. Now let's start. So first we are going to make a few planks for our high poly. So I'm just going to start by making uh, one plank like this. And I'm going to convert it to editable poly. Well, let's move it to make it a little bit wider, something like that. And I'm going to add a few subdivisions to it. Let's say five. Okay. And also I'm going to put some controlling edges because what we're going to do, I'm going to use Turbo Smooth to make everything nice and smooth. So I'm just going to make here two and then pull it all the way to the end. Like this and put on that side. And as well, I'm going to put on both sides, like connect. We can do just one segment and then we can just push it all the way to the end. Now I can just put a Turbo Smooth modifier. I'm going to put the iterations on two and we have a plank done. What I'm going to do next is assign a gray color. So I'm just going to grab one PBR material and I'll put it here kind of like mid gray. Roughness, we are going to put one for now and just sign it so that we see a little bit better our asset. And as well, I'm going to make all the edges not to be green because at the moment, if I deselect it, you can see that it's green and it's not very well visible. So I'm just going to click here and change it so that they are black. Great. Now I'm just going to grab this plank and I'm going to clone it a couple of times. So let's say we want to make it with, uh, we have one, so I'm going to make it with 20 planks in total. So I'm just going to clone 19 more and I'm going to make them an instance. So this way, if we change something on this one, we are going to have all the changes to the other planks as well. And now I can grab all of them, come to our modifier list. And after that use bend, we just need to change our axis to be like this. And what we're gonna do, I'm going to type here 360 so that everything is going into a full circle. I'm just going to open it a little bit so that we have kind of the same type of gap over here and over here. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll just group everything so that it's a little bit easier to move it around so that I don't make uh, any mistake. I'm going to name this HP for high poly and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. We are going to put it kind of in the center of our scene just so that it's a little bit nicer and cleaner. And now that we have everything into the center of our scene, I can just put a FFD modifier. I'm going to use the one which is 4x4 four four. and we are going to click the arrow, go to the control points. I'm grabbing everything from the top and from the bottom and we're going to use scale to make the barrel shape like this. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to grab exactly the same planks that we have here, but this time I'm just going to make them as a copy. And I'm going to remove the FFD modifier and as well I'm going to remove the bend modifier so that we have this straight element. Then we can just grab some of the planks and we don't need this part. So this part here we are going to construct the top. So from this part I'm going to just grab and put an editable poly modifier. And after that, I'm going to use attach and I'm going to attach the rest of the planks. And what I'm going to do is change the pivot point to be in the center of the object. So we are going to hierarchy and after that affect pivot point only and center to object. We are going to turn it off. I'm rotating everything 90 degrees again. And we are going to place it here on the top. Let's make it a little bit smaller, something like that. Smaller. Yes, let's say this works fine. And now what we need to do is delete all the elements that we actually don't need. And uh, those things are not going to be seen anyway. So 
as we already have the editable poly modifier here, I can just go to polygon and after that we can come to the selection. I'm going to use our lasso selection and after that I'm just going to go around like this. Next thing that we're gonna do are the metal rings. So for those, they're going to be pretty fast. So I'm just going to do a cylinder. And after that, we are going to put those cylinders uh, in few places around the barrel. I'm going to make the radius of the cylinder a little bit bigger, just so that it shows in here. And convert it to editable poly. And also I'm going to make like this a little bit of a tilt. Now we are going to edges and I'm going to put control edges here on the sides. So I'm going to use just extrude and zero out both. And then just on the second parameter, I can increase it a little bit. So we have all the control edges. Now I'm going to apply turbo smooth. And let's make it a little bit closer like this to our and we are going to use the same one here. I'm just going to mirror it and I'm going to put two more of those metal ones here on the top and after that on the very bottom. So we have one here and then we will have one on the very bottom. Again, we're going to use mirror by Z and adjust the location where exactly we want it. Okay, now I'm going to quickly make the low poly. So I'm just going to make a cylinder. Again, we are making it from the top. And after that, we're gonna make some adjustments here and there. Okay, and right click, convert to editable poly. So we are grabbing the top and the bottom and scaling it so that it matches the shape then i'm going to get those two and do kind of the same thing so we are moving it like this and then here the middle part and also here okay so if you want to add this as a detail, of course, we can have those as well. But in my case, I'm not going to do this. I want to have a very, very simple low poly model for the end result of the barrel. Now I'm just going to make a very quick UVs. So I'm going to modify a list and after that unwrap UVW, open UV editor. And here we already have the sides, as you can see, unwrapped and nice, but we don't have the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to select those two, right click. And after that, I'm going to click detach edge verts and mapping, flatten, okay. So we have everything. I'm going to click control A to select absolutely everything here. And after that, we are just going to pack it. So I'm going to use one of the automatic packings. And here you can see that uh, our UVs are not optimized. But in this case, I just want to illustrate you how fast you can do some UVs. I usually like to put here on the side, for example, if I'm doing a barrel or something like this, uh, some of the other details. So for example, if we need to have those uh, metal rings as a separate asset, we can make them over here. In our case, I'm just going to leave it like that. And now, finally, it's time to go to back to texture. So we have our low poly asset selected. I'm going to click zero. And then you can see that there is a new menu back to texture. Before it was only opening rendering to texture. This one is still available, but back to texture is a new thing which works a lot faster. And also it's much easier to use than render to texture. As well, you have a little bit more options. So we are just going to click it. And this is how it looks. At the moment for render, I have Arnold. So here on the side, you can see that you have from different renders, all the things that you can select. I'm using R node, so I'm just going to select from here, normal map. And also another thing that I want to bake is ambient occlusion. So we are going all the way to the top and adding this map as well. 
And now you can see for which asset we are baking here by the name. So here we have cylinder 005 and I have this cylinder selected. If we have other assets selected, they will be also here in the list with their namings. And now for the projection from, we need to put from what exactly it's going to be projected. So we need to attach everything from the high poly. I'm just going to right click and hide our low poly. And what we can do is I'll just add an editable poly modifier to our planks. And after that, click attach and select everything from the menu. So this way, everything is all together. So here I'm just going to click from the list. And then you can see that we have our high poly here. So I'm just going to select that one. It automatically adds us some kind of projection. This is something, of course, that we can edit. You can see that here on the top is a little bit weird, but we can edit this. And also I'm going to select from the list for the other map as well from the high poly. Now here we can select the resolution on which channel we want everything to be baked. We already have UVW that we created for channel one. Also, we can select our padding, background, and also how everything is gonna be named. Here on the bottom, you can see that we have where is going to be our output. And as well here, if I move it a little bit on the side, we can select what is going to be the type of the images that we're going to save. I'm going to leave it for now as a PNG. And we have also some other options on the bottom. Like for example, for the normal map space, we can be tangent, screen, world, and so on. And also for the ambient occlusion, we can have how many samples, the darkest and our brightest side of it and also other things that we can do like fall off and so on. So we have quite a lot of new options here and everything you can see is very simple, very quick to adjust it. And once we are done with this, we just need to click bake. So at the moment you can see that here we have our teapot, but here it has this line. So the teapot is darkened and we have this line. This means that this map, which I selected here, is not being supported for the render that I have. I either need to change the render or select something different. This is something very handy that I found out that if you want to bake something and you're wondering what exactly doesn't work out, the team from Autodesk already thought about it and put this small icon over here so that you know that it's not possible. The so first thing that I strongly recommend you checking is if you have the correct render. I'm going to click F10. And then here you can see that I had actually scanline render and this is why those maps over here were not available. I'm going to change it to R node. And now if we add the ambient occlusion, you can see that everything works fine. And before clicking bake, I'm just as well going to fix our cage. So I'm just going to expand our projection and then select here the top of the cage. And after that here from cage, you can see that there is a button called reset. So if I click it, it's going to kind of reset our cage. This means that it's going to put those vertices over here where they were initially. So from here, I can just scale it a little bit so that it captures exactly what we need. And also I'm going to do the same thing from the bottom here and again, scale it a little bit and move it down. This part for editing your cage is something which I actually really like because there was many times where I had some bake issues when baking in other softwares and being able to quickly and easy see what exactly is the cage and where exactly it might cause some problems is a very cool thing. So now that we are ready, I'm just going to select both of them and click bake. And now you can see our ready result. It's something which of course we can always add more details and make a little bit more high poly everything if we need. But overall, I wanted to show you how exactly to work with the new menus inside 3ds Max. Like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss my new tutorials. Thank you and see you next time.